We will call the City Approved Common Council meeting for September 3rd, 2013 to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance led by Councilwoman Cheryl Lee and remain standing for the invocation led by Pastor Rod Carell. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father God, we come to you and thank you for this opportunity to come together and we ask God your blessing upon our city. Thank you for your hand of blessing and we just give you praise for that. And we ask tonight, Lord, for the business at hand, that your Holy Spirit will guide and direct this. Father, we'll be sure to praise you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Roll call. Allie? Here. Golf? Here. Greer? Gustin? Here. Crosscough? Here. Lee? Here. Torrance? Here. We do have a majority. Uh, next item, reading and correcting of the journal. I move we suspend the rules and dissing of the journal. Second. It has been moved by Councilman Crosscough, second by Councilman Alley to suspend the rules and correcting of the journal. Questions? Mm -hmm. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item is communications. <coughs> Tell us. I have nothing to report on the Civic Center. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. And Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, under your building and zoning, Mr. C is out of town, uh, so I have the official report, and I'll mm -hmm. give that copy to uh, you after the meeting. Uh, if we want to look at uh, activity since last meeting, in the commercial and new rehabilitation permits issued, we had a total of three. Uh, building complaints, four. Code enforcement complaints, 28. Uh, zoning complaint one, uh, meetings and consultations on the building department twenty, uh, consultation meeting on code enforcement five, um, consultation meetings with zoning ten, residential demolition permits one, residential electrical permits five, residential new and rehabilitation permits nine, and residential roofing permits one. So that is the activity for the past month for the Building and Zoning Department. And I will make sure that gets to the clerk treasurer for put in the public record. Do you have Thank any you. questions on that? Thank you. Okay. Under unfinished business, first item is ordinance number 16, 2013. An ordinance to appropriate an unsafe building fund to the unsafe building budget to the sum of $150,000. I move we in 2013. Second. Has been moved by Councilman Crosscoff, second by Councilman Gustin to adopt ordinance number 16, 2013. Questions? Uh, I don't think Mr. Harp is here this evening. What this is, is we are moving uh, uh, money to the unsafe building. This will help us with the demolition projects that we have for this year. Uh, some money we had left over from last year. This is going to be commingled with some of the, the money we have in this year's budget already appropriated so that we can get some of these unsafe buildings torn down. Will it get all of them? No. It's what we can afford at this time, so we will be putting quite a bit of money, and I think Jackie and there are 100000 to boot in there already. There is $100,000 in the Board of Works budget, so with this one fifty, we'll have two fifty. and Tom was working on the list. I don't know if he has it complete yet. We're getting close on that, getting the notifications made and everything, but a million dollars that <coughs> neglect of homes that we have to take care of. We'll file the liens and all that, but we'll see what happens. But we are making a commitment to get these neighborhoods cleaned up from these unsightly properties. So that's what this one's all about. Do you have any questions on that? Do you have any questions from the audience? Roll call. Allie? Yes. Goff? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Crosscough? Yes. Lee? Yes. Torrance? Yes. <coughs> okay, motion carries. Uh, next item is ordinance number 17, 2013. An ordinance to appropriate from the unappropriated general fund to the city attorney budget the sum of $633.38. Move we adopt ordinance number 17. Second. Has been moved by Councilman Crosscough, second by Councilwoman Lee to adopt ordinance number 17, 2013. Questions? This is just, um, there was a new employee hired at the police department, and for her to be trained 
this is uh, simply wages to cover for her to be trained during that time period. So it's wages per Social Security, Medicare, and that just pays for her pay while she was being trained. Is she an additional employee or a replacement? No, a replacement employee. Okay. So her salary was in the budget for this year, um, except for the training portion? Correct. Okay. Any other questions? Questions from the audience? Roll call. Allie? Yes. Goff? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Crosscough? Yes. Lee? Yes. Torrance? Yeah, yes. <clears throat> Okay, the next item is ordinance number 18, 2013. An ordinance establishing certain rules and fees for pawnbrokers and secondhand dealers as amended. I move we adopt ordinance number 18, 2013. Second. I have to move by Councilman Crosscoff, second by Councilman Goff to adopt ordinance 18, 2013. Questions? Mr. Chairman, you want to get questions from the audience first? Yeah, first of all, um, who put this on our desks? Okay, I didn't, it wasn't signed. I didn't see any signatures. Yeah, okay. I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I'm sorry. I shouldn't I have. Didn't I didn't know who it was it. from. I'm going I reading honestly it had, you know, thought I'd give you want, it to you. want to come up here and talk in the microphone, please? So sure. David, so everybody that microphone can, on. So everybody yes. can, uh, yeah, the light's on. So everybody at home can mm -hmm. see you. Okay, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, I, yeah, I apologize for just leaving that on your desk. I initially intended to give it to everyone personally and didn't even think about putting my name on it because it's mainly just research information. None of it is really, um, or, well, some of it is original. Um, the things that I wanted to do, and I just wanted to highlight and go through and highlight, I don't want to read the whole thing to you guys. I don't think we have that kind of time tonight. Um, but the proposed ordinance that we're looking at is word for word copied from Kokomo ordinance that was passed four years ago. And it's not being enforced to this date, it's not being enforced in Kokomo with the second-hand shops. I did a sampling of second-hand shops in Kokomo, and of all three shops that I stopped at, all three shops knew nothing about any electronic filing at all, and um, they knew nothing about it, they hadn't been told about it, and they obviously haven't been doing it, okay? Um, so certain, it appears that there's certain businesses that are required to follow this ordinance and certain businesses that are not. It appears to me that only pawn shops and possibly jewelry stores are using it. I did stop at one jewelry store, and they did indicate that they were using this software. The owner of the jewelry store said that she spends two to three hours per day inputting the information into the computer. She has to schedule herself out for two to three hours to input the data for every day. Um, and if you do the math on that, for us, we're open six days a week. If we end up having to put that much information in, which could be more or less, but you, you know, just as a round figure, you're looking at 18 to 24 hours a week, which is indeed actually the time you would see to hire someone part-time to do nothing but enter data into a computer. Um, when I did research, I researched what, what was the trends that were happening around the country with the software and with the uh, implementing um, within their ordinances to upload to, you know, they, electronically. Um, the cost of the equipment and the labor is a huge burden for all the business owners from what I could see. N not to mention some cities actually require the businesses to pay for each and every entry that they make up to $2 per entry. So if you would made, say like you, you know, purchased made 10 purchases that day, you'd have to pay $2 for every purchase, and they would charge you basically $20 to that upload That wasn't part data. of our, that was not part of our ordinance, though. That, the, the ordinance that we're looking at doesn't exclude that, and that's why I'm bringing it up. Okay. Okay. Um, it, it, some cities actually voted the measure through without informing the business owners. So what we're seeing is cities are voting on these measures, not even telling the business owners in their cities that this ordinance is coming up and being voted for, and this, the, the business owners actually don't have an option to be able to come and speak. Unfortunately, you know, with, or fortunately with us, we were told in advance by someone, and so we actually had the opportunity to show up last week. Most business owners in Peru actually probably didn't get the message, and so I personally went out on my own with copies of the ordinance and delivered them to businesses I felt would be actually, um, that would be um, impacted by this ordinance, and um, I reached out to at least 20 businesses, and they all had the same concerns that we do. 
that, that is the cost of the equipment to buy the computers, to pay for the internet service. The cost of the labor is a huge one. Um, and so I'm just letting you guys know that is what I'm seeing as being major concerns from everyone, not just you know, a few people, if you, a few secondhand shops. It's, it's pretty much everybody. That's what their concerns are. Um, and I wanted to let you know that um, there, in some instances where it is voted through um, in, in cities, and like I said, sometimes they, the, the city, you know, the shops are able to like get it turned down from being voted. Sometimes it is voted through without them knowing. Sometimes they're actually able to organize and get that ordinance repealed. And I've seen that happen as well. Uh, the new ordinance that we are looking at and the software that we're looking at requires business owners to take a massive amount of private information about a person for the smallest purchases, transfer it online to another state, and save that information at our business location for a period of at least two years. It also, um, the thing that I find kind of ironic is this Leads Online system, and I looked at it. Um, in fact, in the packets, the very last two pages is, a, is screen captures of what the program actually looks like, what we have to fill out, the massive amounts of data that they're asking for. What I found is that um, the Leads Online system has you agree to their terms and conditions to sign up as a business owner. However, making the use of this program compulsory, it removes our ability to even have the freedom to agree to the terms and to conditions. We are forced to use this program even if we don't like the stipulations of the program. Um, Leads Online is a for-profit company. It is not owned or operated by any law enforcement agency. Leads Online gives monetary scholarships to participating police officers' children for college. And I'd like to know if there's other benefits using this specific software that we haven't been told about for the um, law enforcement agencies because it seems to me like there is a lot of um, solicitation for more business coming directly from the law enforcement agencies to the individual business owners. Um, and I, the, I have one question is, will this Leads Online program be used to engage in sting operations to ensure compliance by business owners of Peru using this software? And that's something else I ran into, is that this software is being used to orchestrations. And in the case that I listed in that packet for you guys to read, the uh, police department went around to several secondhand shops and, sorry, sold them uh, three, I think it was three or four DVDs. And then they went around to these shops later and checked the leads, or they went in later in the computer and checked these leads online system to make sure that they entered those four DVDs into the system. And when they didn't, they were actually charged with misdemeanors. Um, one of the things that I find really, you know, kind of disconcerting is that DVDs to us are like rusty screwdrivers. They are not a big deal. It's not something that, you know, needs to be itemized out by every exact title and, you know, being really kind of meticulously taken uh, record of. It'd be like, you know, keeping track of every pen in City Hall. Who would do that? Who would want to do that? You know, it just seems kind of weird. Um, but they actually are being charged with mis misdemeanors for that, and I'm concerned about that because I'm a person that the worst thing I've ever done was a speeding ticket. If a program like this is going to be used to basically put permanent marks against my record, you know, misdemeanors against my record because I forgot to enter a DVD or something, it really does scare me. Um, and the final thing I wanted to say is if this ordinance is passed, I would like to get an exact requirement as to what information is required to be filled out, what needs to be scanned in, whether photos are required to be taken, which the software offer also accounts for that. And many cities require you to take a picture of every item and a picture of every person coming in. So I have someone coming in selling a used pair of boots. I've got to take a picture of the person and a picture of the used pair of boots. Uh, some cities are requiring that. Um, we'll, and it, I would basically, the last thing I have is I would like an explicit explanation of how exactly how the software is going to be expected to be used by the businesses of Peru and will we be required to itemize every single item into the system. So that's basically my thoughts on it and uh, I'm, I think I'm done. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you guys. Sorry about the so long. <laughs> it's okay. You're fine. Right. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a statement. Come up, please. Sir, would you state your name for the record when you come up, yes, please? Sir. Thank you. I'm the owner and operator of Secondary Metal Processing. We are East 9th Street. Uh, secondary Metal Processing, what used to be a hippie scrap iron and metal, and we acquired the business in 1988. And by the way, hippie was operating 
the facility as far back as early 40s. And uh, we acquired the facility in 1988, and we've been operating it successfully since. Yeah. Uh, i just like to give you a background on what really took place in the last two, three years in terms of surveillance and record keeping, etc. The state of Indiana adopted what they call, which is identical to this uh, proposal, is the valuable metal uh, uh, regulation, which basically require us scrap metal dealers on processor to keep records and on all purchases or transactions we do in a daily basis uh, have record of picture id each individual who enter the premise with some material and we required us to keep this record for two years and have these records available to law enforcement officer as needed in, at any time during business hours. Uh, for example, in the last year and a half, two years, we accumulated a total of over 3,000 entries of information on individual or records on in people who came and sold us material. And this information is available for, for anybody to look at. So as person comes into the facility to say had uh, a washer or a dryer or whatever, we weigh him, and when before we pay him, we enter his. We check if he's been recorded and is in our system, and we give him an ID number. So next time if he comes down, he had the ID number. We go back and check to make sure that is the right ID. So. This has already been established and has been enforced by the state of Indiana. Uh, we have state police come and monitor our work, sheriff department monitor on our work, and the city police department on many occasions come and inquire about certain items which have come missing for, for some individual, and we always have the information available if we happen to purchase the material. Uh, then I look at this in here, we call enhanced regulation for the general public. Uh, the last thing we really need is regulation. We barely ache about the government and rules and laws, and, and there we are right in here in a little small community. Uh, we were enhancing regulation, which has already been implemented and already been enforced, and us business owners were complying, and uh, I don't see any need for any further enhancement. If you, I, I'm not a sociologist or anthropologist or whatever, but if you take a look at the people who were, what we're really after is to find the thief and prosecute them. If you take a look at those fellows, the young men and women who are out there stealing uh, either to support a drug habit, which many of them do, or maybe stealing so they support their family by buying food, et cetera, et cetera. But the majority of them, if you take a look at it, they're high school dropout, they have a drug habit, and they have no education, and they simply can't hold a job. So if we really want to enhance something, I'm looking to talk long term, is we must take a look at this problem to eliminate this, this issue by maybe improving creating some program to get those people jobs so they don't have to go out and steal to support their habit. Of course, the biggest problem you find is many of those kids are on drugs and they use that money, they steal, so they support their drug habit. So maybe drug enforcement is more enhancement to the public than what we tried to ask for extensive amount of information required from us to supply to the police department. And the other thing, which I don't really, I question the legality of it. I don't know if it's lawful for us to submit that information to the police department, and we already have the information available, and it's available to the police department based on inquiry. You know, they got a report of some item been stolen. We normally, if somebody call us, we said, you go to the police department, file a report, the police come and check, and we look to see if we purchase this material or not. 
And if we don't, we just can't have anything to do, to do about it. If we did, then we always look at the person because we're going to record on that person. We have his name, his picture, date of birth, place of life, where he lives, at his address. All of that information really available. So we got information in 3,000 individuals. That's based, if you take Miami County of 35,000 people, I don't know exactly the population of Miami County, and you take the adult population, we basically cover base, a large percentage of the adult population of Miami County. So we have a, an extensive data where it's not really neat. It's there. It's already been collected. All what the police have to do, call on us, which they do, and find out if there is a problem or we don't have a problem. This information of having to transmit every single transaction on a daily basis within 24 hours, as this young lady was mentioning, is extremely time consuming. The monitoring system we installed to comply with the valuable metal regulation, it costs us approximately $10,000 and we have to maintain it and we have to keep it operating, uh, operating and you add additional internet service, additional computerized system, and you have an individual, I'm, when it comes to the internet and technology, I'm an ignorant person. I, I, I have no, I'm too damn old, pardon me, <laughs> <laughs> to even try to understand it and follow up on it. But we have a system in place that's already there. All what they have to do, just ask for the information. We open 7.30 to 4 o'clock every day until noon on Saturday. And if there is an emergency, they got my phone number, I'll come down and unlock the place and let them look for whatever they want to look for. I honestly believe that is not really needed and it's going to be, it's going to be a very expensive proposition for us. And I still question the legality of it in the terms of supplying personal information. You're invading somebody's privacy. And with, if somebody sued us, would the city of Peru will come down and defend me for violating privacy law or the state of Indiana will come down and defend me? If, I've had, if I have these assurances, I will look the other way and consider it. But I don't believe there is a need for it. There is system is already in, in, in application. Uh, and all of this information is available. Uh, but to go and add to it and complicate it further, I don't think that is necessary. It's going to, we're a small business. We're not Microsoft or IBM or General Motors. We don't have the resources of those people have. Uh, we got five person in our operation, and every, believe me, and we are not overstaffed. And if one man took off for one day, then there is nobody to replace, to, for, replace him to do his work. Uh, so, you know, you're creating this additional work. Uh, I don't think it's fair for a start. Second, it's not needed, especially when there is a system in place. And I don't see how could that will enhance the safety and the safeguard of the public. If there is any enhancement to be done, it, let's look at the drug problem in the community. Let's look at the educational system in the community. Look at the social life of this community. And maybe we could make some rules. Maybe we could uh, incorporate certain thoughts and ideas to keep those kids off the street and being constructive. That's all I got, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you, Kelly. Thank you. George. I think that everybody that's not a thief is trying to prevent crimes. And But I would like, Kurt, Steve, I'd like for you guys to put yourself in the shoes of a businessman that just opened up on North Broadway that has no computer, no internet, and no knowledge of running it, like myself. I do not type very well. I would spend probably six hours a day trying to type stuff in. <clears throat> We have one person that works in there per day at no pond. We're just getting on our feet. We've been open two and a half years. But I would really like for you guys to put yourself in the shoes of the people that do not have an internet, do not have a computer. This ordinance says you have to have it. And I think that in itself is totally, totally wrong. 
I feel like what they're asking is Joni here. Yes, I yeah, am. yeah. Joni, I want I, since the top of the microphone, please. Just since the meeting last month, I've turned in every day what I've sold. Could you tell me how many of those items that you entered to leads online? I haven't entered any of them to leads online at this point. Why? Because that's not my job right now, George. We're trying. You, to you think it's my job? I do. You really do. I do. You enter the things that people call in and report as being stolen, do you not? Our dispatch does, or our officers do, yes. Okay. But you feel like it's my job to enter in a 50 cent CD? I'm asking for that ordinance to be passed, yes. And I'm asking it not be passed. I think it's the most ridiculous ordinance that I've heard in many, many years. A uh, couple more things. Um, but like I said, put yourself in the shoes of somebody that does not have a computer, that does not have an internet before you guys vote on this. Um, one more thing. Uh, like I said, we've been in business a little over two and a half years. My total business is buying and selling. Uh, I buy stuff for five bucks, I sell it for ten. Most of our purchases are under a hundred bucks. Once in a while we get a TV, once in a while we get a refrigerator and stuff like that. But we have faithfully, for the last two years, entered serial numbers, the items, copied their driver's license. And this is two months right here of work. I mean, that would take me two months to type this into a computer. We have done all that on our own. We've not been forced into it. I know there's an ordinance that requires that. I understand that. But I did this. I think, I believe I'm the only one doing it. Uh, and I still felt like this ordinance was handwritten for me. I, you guys can say, no, no, this is for everyone. But the 20 businesses that buy and sell in Peru should not be required to buy a computer, buy an internet, and spend three to five hours a day typing stuff in that is not going to deter crime whatsoever. Um, I named my shop No Pond for a reason. We have never pawned anything in the two and a half years and we shouldn't be held to the same standards as a pawn shop. And that's what you guys, if you pass this, is what you're doing. Exactly. Uh, last thing I want to say, I really appreciate, I think the police department does a great job. Every time we've called them, they've been there. We've been there for them too. But I just think this is totally, totally overboard. I just think it's ridiculous. But I would like to thank you for letting me express my feelings. And I ask that all you guys vote against this. Of the members out here, in the audience, how many is against this ordinance? Raise your hand, please. Thank you. Yes, come on up. Would you state your name, please? Hello, my name's Angie Baker, and I own American Vintage at 65. Just opened on August 1st. And I think the biggest concern I have is confusion over this new ordinance. Is it just material that we would buy off the street from individuals, or is it every item in our store that needs to be cataloged? Because I'm hearing convicting stories from other business owners. So before I go into my spiel, if we could just have clar clarification on that. Well, I'll tell you what, Jason, Jason, come forward, please. answer a question it would be only items that you purchase from the public an individual comes into your store and sells an item to you then we would request that you report that if you are some type of shop where you go around to garage sales or if you actually go to flea markets and purchase items we are not requesting that any of those items be reported only when an individual comes in to your store and sells okay. and that makes sense to me because as they stated earlier it's the thieves who are wanting fast cash coming in trying to sell mm -hmm. items but this ordinance is very, very vague. It doesn't specifically state items bought in your store from the public. It needs to be more specific if you are going to pass it because you can tell me verbally that it, like Mr. Mooney just did, it's just for items you buy off the street. But five years from now, somebody who wasn't here tonight could misinterpret this in a different way. Um, my major concern the amount of time it's going to take to do the data entry. Um, when I opened my store August 1st, no one in the city or county 
advise me of the ordinance that we're supposed to report items we sell every day to the police department. I'd like to be informed on what the proper procedure is for that, so I'm not fine. Um, and I would just ask that you guys keep this in mind. You're going to draw businesses away from my or from Peru, because the ordinance only applies to businesses in my or in Peru, not Miami County. So somebody can close up shop, go a couple miles out of town, and it's not going <coughs> to affect them. You're not really getting to the root issue, and that's the drugs, the education. I think you need to look at the bigger picture. American Vintage does not buy off the street for the specific reason that it's probably going to be stolen or we're going to support somebody's habit. We're just not, we don't want sellers in our store. We want people in there to buy. Um, and I'm just proud to be able to invest in Peru. Um, south end of, or north end of town is really starting to take off. There's a lot of new businesses down there. I just ask that you support us and carefully consider the ordinance, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, she's finding her way back to see. Just so everybody understands, this is not a new ordinance that we're just now putting these things in effect. This ordinance has been in effect since 1917. That's when it's passed. The only thing that's being added to this is they are updating the 1917 model. It's including precious metals and, you know, metal, gold, silver, copper, all that. And the idea that instead of it being handwritten, which the 1917 model has, because computers weren't very much around in 1970, it says we'll update to the electronic version. But as far as the ordinance and saying that these are things you need to do, do you have to report this to the police chief? Yes, you do. It's already on the books. This ordinance has been around a long, long time. It's just being upgraded and updated. So the only thing that's really going to be voted on here tonight is, number one, do we want to add the new language to it, including the precious metals? And do we want to include the electronic reporting of it? That's the main difference on it. There, there's actually a lot of differences. Vacation on already existing. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's actually adding a whole lot more because if you look under 116.17 record of transactions, it goes into great detail under number five as far as what they're expecting you to write, keep record of, and it's way beyond anything that's in the... 19 said they wanted record keeping of everything you purchased, correct? It's the same that's, thing. But yeah, but here it, it actually stipulates out to a much greater detail that it wants descriptions. For example, uh, no longer can you just write down, I bought four DVDs. You have to write down, I bought, bought 40 DVDs. These are the titles. And this is the amount I paid. These are identifying mm -hmm. scratches or scuffs or marks. I mean, it's much more, much, much more detailed. And the difference between that is between me writing down 12 DVDs real fast and being done and writing down 12 DVDs and then I've got to write down every single title, which that actually happened to me. I had the Peru Police Department come in and tell me, oh, you wrote down, you bought 12 DVDs, but you only listed 11 titles. And if that's the kind of stuff that we're looking at, it's going to be a huge hindrance. I did write down 12 for the record, not that it's a me against them thing and being right. Um, they did confirm that it was 12 that was written down. But it's a thing that they're going through and they're looking and seeing 12 DVDs bought and they're going through and itemizing and making sure that there's actually 12 titles written down. I mean, it's just, it blows your mind at the amount of time it takes to write down every single title like they want, you know. And that's what this ordinance is doing. The current one we have, we're not required to do that. We're not required to write down every single title of every DVD we buy. That huge time constraint is astronomic. Yeah. It, you know, I appreciate your, your thoughts on it. But I want to ask you, people have mentioned two things. Why don't you worry about drugs and why don't you worry about education? We have and we still are. We have a drug task force. And you read the papers lately. How many meth labs are we busting? <coughs> that in by half cent, that's because these guys know the problem. They are working very hard, and I defend our drug task force completely. They're doing a thankless job, and I don't think many people sitting in here would go with them when they go on one of these raids, if you will. So drugs, City of Peru is working on drugs, and we're making a difference. Education, when I came into this office 10 years ago, the post-secondary graduation rate was less than 10%, or higher than that today. So more people are going to college. Graduation, or the dropout rate, 10 years ago in high school was 25%. Now it's 4%. 96% graduation rate. So let's don't throw these things out because it's simply not true. 
education is improving. We are making a difference in education. We are making a difference in drugs. So let's don't cloud this issue with that because I'm simply not going to buy that because I don't think it's that severe uh, compared to other communities. We have situations just like every community, but our police department is battling that every day, and I give them all the credit in the world. They're doing a fantastic job, and education is making a, a change. I, not the intent of my call the police department or the education system, I mean, there is a drug problem, not in Miami County, there is a drug problem everywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I said a drug and lack of ed education, it's a general statement. None of us could deny the fact these are existing problems. And if there is no problem like that, we will not have people stealing uh, bicycles or mm -hmm. ba a bag of can or, or a copper wire. Why would they do that for? I mean, it's not because they're... I understand what, what you were saying, sir. What I'm saying is trying to handle that. We already are. So to say why aren't we, that, that, that's what I'm opposed to. Yes? Just to try to go along with those statements, in order to rehabilitate and educate those individuals, tool or a, some type of proof that we could use during the investigation. If, let's say, for instance, there's $2,600 stolen from a bank tomorrow, and it gets put out in the paper that $2,600 is stolen, it makes it a lot harder for somebody to come forward to us and say, hey, this person just came in this amount of money, and us be able to use that. Does that make any sense to you? So whenever we're investigating these crimes, much like I made the point with the DVDs and Stacy, when we have specific items that no one else is aware of, then it's a very good tool to use during the investigation to prove the proof beyond a reasonable doubt that we need in order to make the arrest. So, while I think that what he's saying is, is an excellent idea, I think that oftentimes law enforcement, us releasing that information would be not beneficial to us. Mr. Mize. I would like to respond one more time. Uh, in the last two and a half years we've been open, there's been maybe three instances where you guys have come in and said this uh, TV or game system was stolen, and we've <clears throat> handed you our receipts of what we bought in the past two or three days. I think that's a great tool. Um, the tool of the leads online, I feel like is, and I want to say it one more time, I feel like it's for the police department. It wasn't intended for every business to go in there and have to type in their business if it's to me the common sense to me this is just totally beyond common sense you know to say enter every title of every dvd or 25 cent cd that we buy to me that's just beyond common sense the thing that's common sense is if you guys really feel like this leads online does work and i don't argue and i think you do a great job if it does then the things that i turn into you every day that's got serial numbers on it, like TVs and game systems and stuff like that. Why don't you have whoever's entering the stuff in anyway, go ahead and enter that and not put the burden of proof on us and say, here's a tool. Now you got to do all the work, you know, because if you don't have a computer, you don't have internet. I keep saying that, then it's going to be a super big burden, especially if you're an idiot that can't type like me. So you're just trying to kill me. I feel like that's what you're doing. I know you're not singling me out, but I feel, I feel like if you're going to say, hey, you need to do this, and everybody has to do it. That's why this this ordinance should be turned down because it's absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> Mrs. Rhodes, I have an observation. Could you come forward? Please come forward. Yeah. Okay. Could you come please to the come forward. Microphone, here. please. I have a loud voice. I can shout. Um, Thank you. <laughs> George takes in code of honor one. You take in code of honor one. You take in code of honor one. You take in code of honor one. Code of honor one's been stolen. How does he know which one it is? How can we police DVDs and games 
There's no serial numbers, there's a type. If it's a serial number or a precious metal or something that can be ID'd, that's fine. But these games and DVDs is not going to work. How do we know which business happened to take the stolen one? It's a little vague. You, you want to tell her? Go ahead. Say you took in seven at seven different locations in one day. You go to the one location, you see the name. You might already suspect that that person was the thief, the burglar. Now you know that go talk and target this guy. Make him confess to what's happened here. Talk to his family, friends, try to try to get to the bottom of it. So yes, I mean there is some point even to that. This is not going to be a cure all for law enforcement. We don't expect it to solve all crimes. But it will be a very beneficial tool for us in order to begin that investigation to solve that crime. So I hope that's the question we were the only question I have before we go to vote on this, a couple things that I think kind of have answers on. Number one, Sandy, you say you'd be willing to input this data. Do you know how much time that's going to take to you at this point? No. Do you know if your board's going to allow you to do that? That the point is, we can say, well, Sandy can do that, and I know Sandy has other things to do with her time, too, so I don't want the vote to be predicated on Sandy will do it. Uh, might help uh, if they're going to do that. A um, couple other things in here that have been brought up maybe need a little more clarity on it, but I think the overall premise of what they're trying to accomplish is going to be beneficial to everyone, especially those who lose items. Uh, you know, when you talk about the garage sales and, and behind them and try to resell it, we were just looking at it and that the way it's, it's written even in the 1917 version could be a little iffy, I guess. Uh, but as far as, you know, what this is doing, uh, it basically what everybody's concerned about is the electronic transmission of data. So you're not it's opposed not to all... It's part, not safe. It's not safe? Why? Anybody can get in there and get into our computers. We all know this. Computers in our homes are not safe. The data is actually uploaded to Texas. That, that's what leads online. Yeah. Hmm. If anybody wants to know where it goes, right. it goes to Texas. I, I mean, to me, there's two issues. I mean, one is the whether you're going to require them to do it electronically, but the second issue that's been brought up tonight that Jim and I are talking about is what Park had brought up and woman from yep, yep. the definition from the 1917 ordinance which has been repeated in this ordinance in regards to a second-hand dealer um, worries me I mean it says any person who purchases second-hand property of any description for the purpose of dealing in the same and reselling the same so that is park that is her that is somebody that goes to a garage sale buys bags of clothing takes them back to their store and resells them. That is exactly what that is. So that's a problem. It's a problem from 1917 to here, and it's a problem from here going forward, but it's not the main problem a lot of these people have had in regards to the electronic thing. I mean, so. Let me, let me ask counsel, do you, after hearing the, the discussion here this evening, do you think that there ought to be uh, some further review of the ordinance to make it clear. I, I think what Bill just mentioned on the second-hand dealer, we need to clear that up uh, to make sure that everybody understands that. I think before any vote is taken, and that vote is based on Sandy Chittum putting all the data in, I think she needs to come back with a plan, so this is what I'll do. You know, I don't want anybody to vote on say, well, somebody's going to go help them, and it's Sandy, because she may, after a few weeks, say, you know, I just can't do this. So, you know, if, if that's the case, I think the ordinance uh, has merit. I think it needs to be looked at. Uh, but I, I think if we're hearing some things here that need to be addressed, uh, you know, do we want to table it and bring it back with some more clarity on some of these issues so that everybody understands it? Because tonight, 
we couldn't answer the lady's question about if I buy it this way when Bill and I got talking about it, it really doesn't define it very clear in there. So do we need to make, again, I'm not taking away from the merit of, of this thing. I think it does have merit, and I think it's going to make sure that we can catch those who are causing these problems a little quicker and get people's stolen property back to them quicker. So I think there is merit to it. But how are we going to address some of these issues that's in here to make it a little clearer for everyone to understand? Because a couple of times would, would this happen, you know, we weren't 100% sure what would happen. I think we need to kind of go through that, make sure everybody understands it that way, then come back and, and make that final vote on it to make sure that everybody understands it. And the, the electronic issue, I think, is going to be there. I think some people say, no, we can't do it electronically. Perhaps we can show them how quick you can do it electronically once you get it up. I think we got the horse before Pardon? the cart. We got the horse before the cart. Well, I guess I would just say this. Go ahead and vote on it tonight if you want, but just understand that the way it's written now and the way it was written in 1917, as far as I'm concerned, and would include Park, would include the lady over there that's talking about it, would include anybody that does it for a living. I mean, that's what it says. It says, who purchases a second-hand property of any description for the purpose of dealing in the same and reselling the same. So that's very clear to me that that does include those two. So if you, I just want you to know that when you vote on this. As far as, far as the electronic thing, that's, that's up to you. If you want it to be electronic or not, that, I don't have the, an opinion. The other issue that I would like clarified is the gentleman that was speaking there at the first, the secondary metals, he was concerned about invading somebody's privacy. Is that is that an issue Thank with you. this ordinance? Well, yes. he is giving that information of who, who he sold to to mm -hmm. a third, you know, a second entity, uh, leads online. I I can look into that issue. I don't know the answer. I can say this: there, there are ten states that have passed laws that require fingerprinting, photo ID, uh, way more extensive than this, and those are those are state laws. Um, we, we've mentioned the, the metal dealers, what they have to go through now, uh, precious, precious metal dealers, jewelry stores, um, if they are buying and it's not on a trade-in or something, uh, effective January 1st, 2014, they're going to be required to take photos, photos of the person, photos of the item, you know, address, phone number, ID. That's a state law. That's, that's going to be a state law. Um, but it does not require them to electronically download it. It requires them to hold the information for two years. Uh, so, I, you know, I'm I'm sitting here and I'm I'm torn. Um, hang on, I'm, I'm torn w with this. I understand. I owned a small business. My father owned a small business for years and years. And years. I understand it. I I fully understand an extra three to five to six hundred dollars a year for internet. Uh, obviously, the computer is is um, something you, that uh, the cost is, is different. You don't need a, a huge amount for a computer. Um, but then I'm torn because I'm trying to uphold um, uh, the citizens of Peru to help deter, deter crime. If it's if it's um, uh, you know if it's it makes it easier for the police to key in, uh, um, uh, you know. Um, TV set, um, Toshiba TV set, and all of them that pop up from everybody who's reporting it, it's right there instead of going to your place and your place and your place and your place and your place. Instead of making six trips, they look, um, they, they look at one spot on a computer and it's there. So I understand why they want it. I understand why you want it, why you don't want it. So it's a difficult situation. Uh, do the do, do the do the needs of the few outweigh the needs of the many, or vice versa? Uh, so, um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I would, I, was could do something. I would personally like to see the issues cleared up that <clears throat> our attorney has talked about. The vagueness, mm -hmm. the uh, the vagueness. I would like to see the uh, check into whether or not we're going to be invading somebody's privacy. <clears throat> you know. Do we need just to get the name, the date of birth, and the address, or do we need to scan a, a driver's license? On the other page there, it says we need to have some type of government-issued identification. Uh, should that all be included? Can we make this a little bit easier and still have enough information, you know, to help the police department? 
I think there's some things that we can look at in the ordinance. Well, in, I think in regards to scrap metal dealers and, and, and you know precious metal dealers, they're going to be required to take photo IDs. So um, we already do. right, right. I know you do. I know. You. And it's been a very successful. I got one one more remark to make. Uh, okay, uh, Kelly. Can I? Yeah. Uh, I think I'll speak loud enough. Like what that means. <laughs> um, just listening to the folks here, and many of them are farm jobs. No farm jobs. No, but we're just buy sell. We buy sell. Oh, yeah. to buy and sell. Uh, in a way, that's an entirely different industry than we are. We're a recycling metal industry. We already got a system in place, by the, in place legislated by the state of Indiana where we have picture ID, we have all the information required, we keep records for two years, we have video record for two years, we have a picture of the individual as he's collecting his cab, we have a picture of the material as it goes into the scale. All of this is available. I mean, it's already there. We have a record of 3,000, 3,200 to be exact. And that just covered an awful lot of people. If there is a question of, of a problem, if somebody has stolen something, uh, we normally refer it to go to the to the the victim. With them. You go to the police department, file a report, and they'll come and check with us. And in many occasions, they come and check with us. And always the investigation was very successful. We find the individual, we located the item, and. <coughs> I think this reporting that the chronically and individual item, like I give you this example, this is one day. This is better than a hundred entry. This is one, and this is a slow day. <laughs> okay? Now, you're putting up lots of things on us which I really I could see if it's really gonna enhance the safeguard, Annie, but it's not going to. It's already doing what it's supposed to do. We keep a record mm. for two years. We got videos for two years. We got license, uh, driver license record of over 3,000 people. And I think by putting us with the pawn shop folks and the second hand, no. it's not really fair for us because we already got a system established. So I think when you look into the issue again, you ought to take that in consideration. I mean, I'm not trying to segregate myself from everybody else either. But the simple fact that our, the nature of our business, our clientele, are in touch, we're not quite different, but we could track them. You know, somebody brought a five pound bag of can. We have it recorded, we have it documented. We have a picture of the guy putting it in the scale. We have a picture of the guy collecting his uh, uh, two and a half dollars. I mean, what more you would eat? I mean, you know, this is good. Sometimes, you know, you overkill the cow, you know, when it's dead, it's dead. I mean, we had a lot of information. It's already available. We don't have to implement anything. We don't have to regulate anything. And any enhancement to it is going to be an extra work for the police department. I'm very sure they're not going to be able to go process this information instantly. They're going to have to have additional people to do the work, which would be an extra cost to the city. We have to hire people to go out and do that extra work. And this is why I call unproductive capital and unproductive labor. And we have to look at it in that regard, in that respect. Do we really waste, want to waste that capital? Do we want to waste that extra labor? I don't think we should. But that's basically what I feel that we've been asked to do things which we are, we are already doing it. Now we have an extra to it which has no value. In our opinion, we have no, everything is the need is there. It's a simple phone call or simple visit. We look for this. There's the pot. This is the picture. This is the individual. His name, his license, etc., etc. It's already there. When, Two, three minutes, he got the investigation completed. Why should I have to go and file all this information and send it electronically? Well, I'll wait. Uh, what's wrong with me sending that fax that that copy? That's a recap of the whole day. There's something in question. We already got the hard copy. This is the hard copy of all that. This is the recap of these. That's kept for two years. It's kept for two years. We want to keep it for three, we'll keep it for three. Five, we'll keep it for five. But why do I need to go and buy a computer and hire somebody?
to go and send that information to the police department when it's already there. I have, a, I have a question, George. I have a question for you. Yes, sir. How many items that you purchase? Did, you're all right. Just stay right there. How many items? What percentage of the items you purchase are from out of town? Oh, very, very few. We know just about everything. I've, I've just. Yeah. Uh, my thought process behind that is if somebody steals it in Logansport, it, it, Kokomo, and Rochester, and, and so comes down have, here to sell it. We have one That's my item question. that was stolen in Marion, mm -hmm. and we had his ID and the, the form that he filled out. Mm -hmm. He got caught and got arrested for it. That's one item in two and a half years. So you don't have, there's not 25% no. of your items coming in from out of town. We don't that have was, items. well, that's what I was less wondering. Than, I, was, I, I was, I was wondering if Peru's going to be a, a hub to come and sell things no, no, because they couldn't track it if it yeah. comes from a different we're city. We're that's still, just. We're what, delivering everything to the police department every night. I understand. I understand. But you still got to. But if, you, if you're doing it, and he's, you know, if they, here's the, here's, from the, here's from the police's point of view. If they can go look at it at one spot instead of calling ten different stores, do you have this? Do you have this? Do you have this? They don't have to call ten different stores. We deliver this stuff. No, no, no. They still well the other stores, but they still got to go through ten piles of paper instead of looking at one computer program for one TV. Yeah, one TV and everybody's. And they don't have to go to each individual store. I think that's a misnomer. They've got that information set right on the desk right now. So ten different piles of paper. I have one more comment. I think, you, you, I think you said that twice already. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it's admirable, and you guys know that I support the police department. I try and do everything I can to prevent crime. It's very admirable of what you're trying to do, but I feel like it's overzealous. It's causing a big hardship on people that don't have computers and internet. Sandy, what I would like to ask you, uh, if they do table this, I've got two months' worth of stuff right here. Uh, I turn it in every day at the police department. Would you consider, since you said you'd help everybody, just maybe for one week go in and, and, and type in or a few days and see how long it takes you and see if you think that it's More really specific. bad. I don't know if you feel like it's valuable or not, but the time constraint, of, and you know how to type, I don't, so it's going to be impossible for me. But if you would do that, because they do, we every day we turn in what we buy to the police department. We bring it down here. Sometimes we've had to wait 20 or 30 minutes for somebody to come to the door when it's after hours, but we're trying to do it in the morning when they're open. But if you if you could do that, that would give you a better concept of what we would have to go through as, a, as an individual business, which, and I still say, I don't think a DVD or a 50 cent CD is going to make the difference. Uh, the ladies and gentlemen of the council, if you do decide to uh, table, I would say we bring it back next month and in the next month that we go talk to some of the business to get more clarity on them, talk with the police department, you know, get more clarity from them. We do not want to delay this thing any longer if we table it, but since there is some things here that's been brought up that may need a little more clarity, that may be the option you want to go with, but we can't just put it off month after month. So no. we need to do our homework, get the information we need, if there are changes that we need to be made in, in Ordinance 18, we get those made and brought back to the floor. Yes, Tom? I hate to dissuade you, but you're not going to get that done in a month. I've been working on the fireworks ordinance trying to get that thing together, and I've been at it three months. No, I, I think we can in a month, Tom, and here's why I say that. The things we hear about, the, the uh, definition of secondhand dealer does probably need some clarity on that, as, as, as uh, Bill has, has brought up. Uh, some of the other things about, you know, whether Sandy's going to be able to do some of this to help people, uh, you know, what information, if it's going to be able to be downloaded quicker on the, the computer. There's really a few points, but I think overall most people here just don't want to put it in electronically. Amen. So if we can get that resolved, plus get some clarity on is it a second-hand dealer if you go to the garage sale, buy it, and then turn around and sell it in your store someplace, if that definition is going to be, yeah, it is, and originally we thought, no, that's really not going to be an issue, do we need to make some changes on that or some clarity on that so that we can answer it with certainty? But as I said, I think there's a repeat of, all right, Mrs. Rhodes, okay. loudly, please. Okay, I understand being a small person, business person, what the obstacles to this ordinance are. But quite frankly, I would rather spend a couple hours a night in front of a computer 
Let him spend hours in front of a computer when he needs to be out on the street. Do we want to tie up our law enforcement doing paperwork when we need them on the street? I don't like the ordinance, but if I have a choice of me doing the work or him doing the work and not being on the street where he needs to be, I'll put in a couple hours. Okay. You know, we need to work with our law enforcement. They have a job to do. They need to be boots on the ground. Yes, sir. Last comment. Um, and your research for clarity on the format established by the police department. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm hearing is it's a leads online. Is that the is that what yes. is that what we're going to is that going to be the format established by the police department? Yes. Okay. okay. And it just says now if they would now if you would change in five years to a different format then that that would be the update. Then you've got the leeway to do that. Right. Okay. Okay. But is there a subscription for that? Is there a cost per item, or does it need to be? No. So we pay a subscription fee. I think leads online to address one of George's statements earlier. It's not a, it's a profitable organization for them, but we're not looking to burn the businesses any more than we have to to get so, help. So there's no subscription fee for you. Leads Online offers that to the businesses that you do not have to pay a cent for that. Each fee. item and we don't nothing. require anything for every item. It is a transaction. It's just through the business. Right, and I know that they talked about it, but internet access and a computer is basically all you would need. You can log on, you would type hit a little button that says register, enter in your business information, and from that point on, your business would report the items that you purchased. Will they be able to access <coughs> your home, too? Or does that have to be entered at the business? So they don't necessarily have that. It's a website, right? Yeah. So they can do yeah, it from their they home. Right. Yeah. Good, you know, uh, for the next meeting, could you arrange to have it? Can you get internet access in here and have somebody demonstrate? Yeah, enter a few items for us. Just, 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 would that be good? Okay, um, if I get the council's gist, we want them to you have, um, you have clarify to to items. Well, you have to make a motion to table it. Right, I'm just, before I get to that point, whatever language you want in it. We want them to clarify the language in the ordinance, correct, before we vote on it? Well, I want to say Tell something. Us. Number one, we're all up here to serve the people, right? Everybody right. agree with that? Okay. And listen to their concerns. And uh, far be it for me, with the little business that we have in town now, and it's not very much, and you really have to work, if you are in business, to make it work, I, I want every means taken that we don't hurt them, every business that we don't hurt them. So we've got to come to something to protect our businesses, too. You're here. I agree. Thank you. I've sat here and listened to everybody's concerns. I think we have to protect our people from crime, too. From doing what? From crime. Well, that's, we got a police department supposed to do that. Well, but and it's well staffed. But that's what they're asking us. Yeah, for. it's well staffed. And they got a lot of cars and everything else. So, and, then, and by the way, when he says, we, no, we, meaning he just took the police department, that's us. That's our taxpayers. We are funding this here. Your software and everything like that. Those people out there are funding it. So my concern is we do, it has to be done right, and there does need some change in the wording, the wording of it, but we have to really be concerned with our business people and keeping our businesses here. That's all I got to say. Okay. Do we, do we want the language modified before we vote on it? Well, I'm just I'm just trying to get a. Yes. You want to? I'm either. Well, I'm either. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, motion. To please. Huh? Sure. I'd yeah, make I a motion like to table the ordinance. I'll second that. Oh, hang on. You want to continue on with that and table the ordinance to, to allow a clarification of some of the uh, questionable language, and also to check on the uh, legality of whether or not we're in, you know going to be stepping on anybody's rights. And it's been around since 2000, and they've collected over 580 million pieces of information in all 50 states. So no one's challenged it. So. Uh, not that I've found. No. Okay. 
So that's your motion. Yep. I'll second that. Right. It has been moved by Councilman Goff, second by Councilwoman Torrance to table ordinance number 18, 2003. Questions? Roll call. Alley? Yes. Goff? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Crosscough? Yes. Lee? Yes. Torrance? Yes. Okay. Motion carried. Table for next month. Okay, next item is ordinance number 19, 2013. An ordinance to appropriate from the unappropriated fire territory to the fire territory budget the sum of $16,000. Move we adopt ordinance number 19, 2013. Second. Has been moved by Councilman Crosscross, second by Councilman Gustin to adopt ordinance number 19, 2013. Questions? Chief Betzner? Yes. You want to come forward, please? Yes. Hello there, Chief. This is to purchase an 05 uh, E450 Ford ambulance from Wabash Fire. They've ordered a new ambulance. Uh, this is one that's been in their fleet that they, they've kept maintained. Um, it'll come with a dual um, head radio. Um, we'll be able to put our soft goods on it and take the place of our 94 E350. Um, earlier this year, that uh, E350 uh, broke down with some fuel injectors. Uh, it was old enough that I didn't know if we was gonna chase those fuel injectors down and that unit was out of service for a week. So when Dukes was level, at level zero, we're their backup. We couldn't make ambulance runs uh, for a week while that was in the shop. Um, quite fr frankly, that disturbed me. The reason we got an ambulance um, was to better serve the citizens and there we couldn't do that. So we would keep the 94 in reserve capacity. Um, uh, this would be our main uh, truck out. And again, uh, new ambulance is $130,000. Uh, this one is, uh, we'll be able to put on the street for 16,000. I think it's a good investment. I went over a month ago with one of um, uh, my techs and we drove it. It's, um, it's a nice unit. And <coughs> in the last two years, Wabash Fire spent $13,000 in repairs, um, you know, they, they're kind of like us. When they're broke, they fix them. So I feel good about this unit. It's got good tires on it. We put our soft goods on it. I get it certified and we'd be able to run it. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I missed the year. It, this is a, a 2005. So uh, you're, upgrading, you're upgrading 10 years? Uh, 11, ours is 94, huh? so yeah. Okay. Any other questions? You might explain what a if we were to look at new ambulances, oh, yeah. yeah, new ambulance is one hundred thirty thousand dollars. So now the one we have now, you crank the you crank well, the siren. Well, it's you, a little better now. Right? Yeah, it's again. Uh, it really bothered me when it broke down this year, and again, it was a week to get it repaired, and there we sit. You know, uh, we're EMTs. We've got medical equipment on the engines, but if you can't transport, you've got crews stuck at the scene waiting on a transport. Uh, when we're down and Dukes is at level zero. Uh, units come out of Converse and Galveston, which again, if, <coughs> if it's a dire situation, that's a long time to wait. Yep. So, yeah, our ambulance it does, service it does uh, make uh, revenue for the city. We do make our ambulance revenue. service does pay for itself, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. Uh, I run these projections since we've been in the uh, ambulance business. Um, we started July of 2010 through July of 2013. Um, we have collected $33,320 in revenue uh, with our ambulance service. So so you're able to pay for this? We're able to pay for that, yeah. That we've got the money in unappropriated and that, that we've collected, so. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Chris. Okay. Any other questions? Questions from the audience? Roll call. Alley? Yes. Goff? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Crosscough? Yes. Lee? Yes. Torrance? Yes. <coughs> yes. Carries. We move into new business. First item is uh, you have a planning commission board appointment. I think you have one. Is he here? Is he? Ah, oh, there he is. Okay. I think going to let him talk. Pardon? <laughs> we let you talk. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ben Edward Gustin Sr. I have one question before you ask me any questions. What does the Zoning Commission do? That's the only the question I have. Commission, planning, planning, commission. Commission. planning Commission. Planning Commission, not the Zoning Pla planning Commission. Planning Commission. 
Make sure we get your run through. What, the what do they do? Once you answer that. Oh, okay. Planning Commission does uh, handle zoning. If you want to do some zoning changes to a piece of property, um, they look at setbacks. If somebody wants to come in and you know maybe uh, build a new house, they got to follow the setbacks. Uh, anybody wants to uh, start a new business, uh, and sometimes they have to go in there and just make sure they have all of their uh, rules and regulations in place. Uh, they would vacate alleys. Uh, they would make uh, other improvements. So it's mainly in your zoning planning commission mainly plans things out for the future is say you have a new area of town and you say okay out here we would like to have this one section be general business and we want a little residential back here we want a little you know uh, industrial maybe here you have the planning of how you want to lay that out once you make that decision it's not final it has to come to this body and they will put the final seal of approval on it so you are an advisory body to this body. We okay. do have a handbook that's here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how many people are on that land commission? Nine. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. That's, that's what I needed to know. You have any questions for me? I'm open for anything you want to know. You can work hard I guess I got one question. What, what do you see for the future, Prue, as far as improvements in the direction you'd like to see the, the city go? I didn't have a question. Oh. What, what vision do you have of Peru in the future? And if you would like to see improvements to the community uh, from a zoning perspective and a planning perspective, what is it you would like to see happen? Uh, I don't really want to see like a big town or anything because i born and raised here. I like it here. Uh, it's a great place to raise a family. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, we, need, we need to do some, some things to help help the kids out more. Mm -hmm. As you know, there's not a lot of things for kids to do, but that's not what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm retired, and I have plenty of time on my hands to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here tonight, mm -hmm. to see if I can help the community, mm -hmm. because they've helped me greatly in just the past few years. Mm -hmm. So I want to give back. Good. Thank you. Any other questions? You have a motion? I move we um, appoint Ben Gustin to the Planning Commission Board. Second. Yeah. Uh, the motion is made by Councilman Cross, I'll say by Councilman Gustin to uh, accept uh, Ben Gustin as Planning Commission Board appointment. Any question? Question from the audience. Roll call. Allie? Yes. Goff? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Crosscough? <laughs> yes. Lee? Yes. Torrance? Yes. <coughs> yes. Thank you for. Uh, uh, do you see Jackie? There's, there's a great. book over there <laughs> that needs to be memorized. There'll be a test at 9 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Tell him that, that you'll memorize it after he does. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Congratulations, Ben. Next item uh, is ordinance number 20, 2013. An ordinance to appropriate from the unappropriated park fund to the park golf budget the sum of $5,809. Move to consider ordinance number 20, 2013. Second. Has to move a councilman cross only to consider ordinance number 20, 2013. Roll call. Alley? Yes. Golf? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Cross Yes. Torrance? Yes. Okay, and that will come back next month since it's an uh, inappropriation, but a lot of the, and the next uh, two, the next one you'll hear too, it's the overtime due to the storm that we had uh, here a month or so ago. So that'll come back for <coughs> that adoption. Next item is Ordinance 21, 2013. Okay from the unappropriated park fund to the park recreation budget, the sum of $1,219. Move we consider ordinance number 21, 2013. Second. Has been moved by Councilman Cross, Cross, second. Consider ordinance 21, 2013. Roll call. Alley? Yes. Goff? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Crosscough? Yes. Lee? Yes. Torrance? Yes. That one will come back next month as well. Uh, the next item, ordinance 22, 2013. An ordinance to appropriate from the unappropriated fire territory fund 
to the fire territory budget the sum of fifteen thousand dollars move we consider ordinance number 22 2013. <laughs> second. Move council cross second my councilman Goff to consider ordinance 22 2013. roll call alley yes golf yes gustin yes cross cough yes lee yes torrance yes okay and that also will come back next month how did we um how do we rack up the overtime on that how did this we incur the overtime on the fire territory chief it's uh last year i had to do the same thing with uh sickness i've got a minimum staffing okay and with the tornado and increased runs uh, we've got a minimum staffing we've got to maintain so it happened okay. to us last year as well uh we we appropriated the fifteen thousand, but used about seven thousand of it last year i just don't want to have to come back again and ask okay just so it'll go back into what a, what we don't use will go back into the unappropriated. Thank you. Okay, next item is ordinance 23, 2013. An ordinance fixing the schedule of rates and charges to be collected by the city of Prue, Indiana from the owners of the property served by the wastewater department. Move we consider ordinance number 23, 2013. Second. Did you second that, Terry? Yes. Okay. As moved by Councilman Crosscross, second by Councilman Alley, to consider ordinance number 23, 2013. Roll call. Alley? Yes. Goff? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Crosscoff? Yes. Lee? Yes. Torrance? Yes. That also will come back next month. That is on the proposed increase in the wastewater fee. <coughs> next item Resolution 10, 2013. A resolution of the Common Council of the City of Peru. Approving the request of American Stationery Company Incorporated for tax abatement. Move we adopt resolution 10, 2013. Second. Second. Has been moved by Councilman Crosscross, second by Councilwoman Lee to adopt the resolution 10, 2013. Questions? Christy. Good evening. Good evening. Um, tonight, I, we actually have two companies here, but first one is American Stationery. They are uh, purchasing two F9C digital presses. You should have the paperwork in your file. Its value is about $580,000, and they're proposing to keep their 100 employees and add additional two. And if you'll remember, in July, they were proposing to get a HP 7600. They are no longer going to be getting that piece of equipment. They're actually going to change their presses to Xerox. And um, so we would also say we want to rescind resolution number 8, 2013, as a preclusion to you considering the tax abatement. And um, they would also be... They would also be turning in another piece of equipment that they currently have a, a tax abatement, and that will go because they're going clear to they're going to Xerox. But actually, I have both Mike and Jerry here from American Stationery, so I'll let them talk for a minute. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I don't want to. Yeah, that's. Right. I don't want to say the wrong thing. How are you guys? Fine. We, we basically made, we, we came before the council uh, last time and we're going to add a 7600 HP to, to the mix. Um, we decided uh, in hindsight after going through negotiations that Xerox made better sense for, uh, for us. So instead of just getting one piece of equipment, we're, at, we're getting two pieces of equipment. Um, and so um, we're changing platforms. Um, so um, no, no different uh, in what the press can do and how it can help our business, just a different brand. Mm -hmm. So if there's any questions that I can answer for you guys at all, I'd be happy to. <coughs> Getting two presses instead of one? Correct. Okay. So our other resolution, resolution eight that we passed last time was just to get one, but this resolution 10 now is for two pieces of equipment. Correct. So do we need to yeah. rescind resolution eight or is it just gonna fade away? We need to rescind, rescind it. it. So we need to, do we need to rescind 8 before we pass 10? Better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, we've got a resolution on the table, though. I mean, we've got a resolution uh, 10 on the table, so I move we table resolution 10-2013. Second. Has been moved by Councilman Crosscost, seconded by Councilman Gusson to table resolution 10-2013. Thir Questions? Roll call. Allie? Yes. Goff? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Crosscoff? Yes. Lee? Yes. Torrance? Yes. Motion carries. Now you can. Now I need. Now I move that we rescind previously passed well, resolution well, number on, eight, two thousand. Huh? You have to put it on the agenda first. Okay. I move we add. Make a motion to add resolution. Re eight. Our matter resolution eight, two thousand thirteen, to the agenda. Second. And move by Councilman Crosscoff, second by Councilman Goff to add uh, suspended rules and add resolution eight, two thousand thirteen, to tonight's agenda. Questions? Roll call. Allie? Yes. Goff? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Crosscoff? Yes. Lee? Yes. Torrance? Now yes. you can move to rescind it. Now I move that we uh, rescind previously passed resolution number 10, 2013. Number 8, number eight 2013. Second. And to move by Councilman Crosscoff, <laughs> second by Councilman Goff to rescind previously passed resolution 8, 2013. Question? Roll call. Allie? Yes. Goff? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Crosscoff? Yes. Lee? Yes. Torrance? Yes. It is rescinded. Now you now I need to move that we rem we uh, remove from the table res resolution number 10, 2013. Second. Has been moved by Councilman Crosscoff, second by Councilman Goff, to remove resolution 10, 2013 from the table. Discussion. It's on the floor. It's now. on the floor. That was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, you already we're back. Yeah, that you had on there that you were going yeah, to okay. adopt. So, so it's all right. Um, <coughs> if you have, have any questions, questions we can no. ask for the roll call. No, no. I guess we're ready for a vote. Roll call. Allie? Yes. Golf? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Crosscoff? Yes. Lee? Yes. Torrance? Yes. <laughs> Thank okay. you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next Thanks, Resolution 9, 2013. A resolution of the Common Council of the City of Peru for Snavely Machine and Manufacturing Company Incorporated for tax abatement. Move we adopt Resolution 9, 2013. Second. And to move by Councilman Crosscoff, second by Councilman Gustin to adopt Resolution 9, 2013. Question. Christy. Thank oh, you. Again. <laughs> Um, Stavely Machine is proposing to purchase $3.4 million in new equipment with a proposed life expectancy of 10 years or more. Um, they are proposing to keep 143 of their current employees and add 10 additional. Paperwork should be in your packets as well. Um, also should have a list of all the equipment that they are proposing. As you can see, it's quite the list. And actually, I have Joe from Sandy Machine here that can probably talk a little more intelligently about the machinery. So Joe, come on up, please. Uh, Good evening. Good evening. Um, with the particular request that we're asking for the uh, tax abatement on, um, there's quite a bit included in this. Um, we've exceeded the amount of people that we had predicted to be hiring for the uh, past ordinance or past tax abatements that we've asked for. Um, this is just continuing growth. Uh, we currently have two impreg lines. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the process. I believe Angie said it last time she uh, explained it, but it's where we draw a vacuum on um, porous aluminum castings that need to be sealed and then reduce a resin to them. Um, impregnate them with the resin then goes through a rinsing and then a curing process. Uh, right now um, with the expansion of the nine and ten, eight and nine speed for Chrysler Kokomo, we are the sole impregnation, impregnation shop for Kokomo, all four casting plant. The casting plant, ITP1, ITP2, um, as well as um, KTP and the new uh, Tipton transmission plant will also be impregnating for them. So we're putting in two additional lines at this time, and we're requesting for the abatement on those lines. As well as last, we talked about the um, 272 hub for the nine-speed transmission that we were awarded. Um, we currently have employed uh, four people for the line um, and four people in quality. We will be expanding that also an additional um, eight people. Um, 
and all of this is related to those two items. Uh, Chrysler's got problems if something happens, don't they? To you. Chrysler has problems if something happens to you. Oh. Right? <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're really, uh, as much as we do for them, I know we're a small, small entity for them, but we are consider considered a strategic supplier, so. I thought you said you were the sole supplier of these. For, for impregnation, yes. Okay. We are okay. in the That's fact what I was referring that to. All, most, the majority of the work for impregnation, if not all, is coming to our facility, all of the high production. There are other impreg facilities out there, um, okay. but we're uh, logistically, we're close, and we do a good job of very competitive in pricing. But, good. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. But I'll tell you, they have been a real, so you can remember back when Snavely first came to town and started out small, and they've continually built up, and so they uh, have done a good job for the city of you know, increasing employment and being a good corporate partner for the city. Any question, ladies and gentlemen? Any questions from the audience? Roll call. Allie? Yes. Goff? Yes. Gustin? Yes. Crosscroft? Yes. Lee? Yes. Torrance? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anything? Yeah. Thanks. Do you have three or four more forks, Christy? <laughs> uh, I'll work it out next okay. week. Right? Please. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep it coming. Keep it coming. Okay, do we have anything else to come before the council? Anything from the audience that anyone would like to bring forth? Seeing none, a motion to adjourn would be so moved. Second. Second. All in favor, signify. Aye. 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 We're out. Keep all your papers. Do you keep all your papers? Yeah. When it's over, it's over. Uh. Yep. They almost set a record on it. There you go. When it's over, it's over. Yeah. She makes it into the official and puts it up. That's where I'll go get it if I need it. Uh. Like hey, Joni. Yeah. Are you D? <laughs> yep. I'm going to read it. That's what you're keeping up with the Kardashians. I have her number. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, George. Uh, I have um, her number. Thank you. No. no I got yours, too. <laughs> Can you? Okay. I can try. I can yeah. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. I didn't D, know if you guys D, D, you can have her put it in his box. Thank you, yeah, but he, yeah, but he won't get it. Well, who's calling you? Yeah.